I've officially reached paradise. Um, I've come to the south part of the island on the most secluded beach of the island and I've come here alone. Camping alone and in circumstances that would seem questionable to most, but things just seem to work out perfectly. However, you're never as alone as you might think. Not too far from my camping spot, I met a small group of kind-hearted individuals that I felt comfortable going to in case I needed the help. Yeah, I did come with friends, but they only stayed for one night and I wanted to stay, to stay for an unlimited amount of time because, I don't know, I feel like I needed a place, a change of scenery, a place to recharge and reconnect with myself and just be alone for a little while because it's funny, when you travel alone, you expect to spend a lot of time alone. Uh, but it was time for some me time. So I went to a place where I had to store my food up and in trees and wear river showers with a basic daily activity. My camping family, but... You know, everyone needs a little bit of alone time and this is the perfect place to do it. This is insanity, this place. It doesn't look like the same island. It's... So it's like a stream here, and then you walk up there, and it goes to little pools. What is my fucking life right now? I don't know. <laughs> From the wholesome meals cooked by caring strangers to the simple and sweet conversations that took place around the nightly campfires, this chapter of the trip felt and still feels like a fever dream. The only thing left was to hope for the violent winds to leave. A really strong wind that was present from the day I arrived. But that still didn't stop me from continuing to camp in a painfully open spot. Because you know what? I had the best view for the moon and sunrise and nothing could make me miss those views. Like I said, you're never as alone as you might think. What I desired to be a 10-day solo excursion got quickly and surprisingly shortened to five. Kiren, an Israeli woman I met on the beach, kindly came one morning to let me know a storm was coming. And what did that mean? No boat. Had I brought my tent, I might have stayed for the storm. But with a hammock, I would have turned into a drowned rat quicker than you could say Malacca. So I very quickly packed up my things and waited on the beach for hours, hoping for the boat to come, as this would be the last day it would. Thankfully, the crazy Greek sailor with missing teeth came to the rescue. This footage does not do that day justice. A storm was fucking brewing, let me tell you. The waves got all of our things wet, but it didn't matter. Because at that point, all I wanted to do was go back to my camping family. 